Have you heard about academic integrity? If you haven't, you're about to. If you have, what do you remember? Regardless of your level of familiarity, it's very important at Duquesne University. The university has a policy and a committee dedicated to academic integrity. You can read the whole policy here, but right now we're going to focus on some important definitions. The Duquesne University Academic Integrity Policy defines academic integrity as the pursuit of knowledge and understanding in an honest and forthright manner. What does that really mean, though? Well, we can think about how this policy applies to your work by considering the two main violations of the policy, plagiarism and cheating. You're probably familiar with the obvious ways that plagiarism and cheating occur on campus. Borrowing someone's homework, copying and pasting text from an article without citing, turning an individual assignment into group work, asking for answers on a test. All of these are violations of academic integrity. But there's more. Along with the definition of academic integrity, Duquesne's policy defines cheating as using unauthorized material or assistance on any type of exam or project, including the use of notes, electronic devices, and any other unapproved materials. With respect to group projects, labs, and other contexts, cheating includes deception with the intent to influence grades or outcomes. In addition to cheating, there's the issue of plagiarism, which applies to written, electronic, and oral work. Plagiarism is the use in any form, including copying, summarizing, paraphrasing, or quoting of the work or specific ideas of another person without specific acknowledgement, including proper citation and quotation marks where appropriate. Plagiarism also includes submitting written work purchased from another person or entity and submitting work previously submitted for credit in another course. So what do all these definitions really boil down to? You're cheating if you use materials not explicitly provided or approved by your instructor with permission to use them on an exam or controlled assignment. You're cheating if you ask for answers or help when it's not allowed. You're definitely cheating if you steal the questions to a test or if you purposefully lie about the outcome of an experiment or other type of project. What about plagiarizing? If you use someone else's writing or ideas within your own work without giving them proper credit, you're plagiarizing. This applies even if you paraphrase or summarize what someone else said. You can even plagiarize yourself by submitting work to one class that you've already submitted for credit in another course. And obviously, you're plagiarizing if you use a paper or project that you bought off the internet. Now you know the definitions, but why should you care about any of this? Think of it this way. Who are you really cheating when you cheat or plagiarize? If you violate academic integrity intentionally, maybe you think you're gaming the system. However, aside from disrespecting your professors and classmates, you're really cheating yourself, out of learning, out of the money you pay for your classes, and out of opportunities to improve yourself. When you complete the other tutorials, you'll learn more about academic integrity, including how to identify and avoid the pitfalls of cheating and plagiarism. When you're finished, you'll be an academic integrity expert.